through this all throughout the spring from March 12th up until now. And we had the announcement in July that the fall sports will be suspended into the spring. How have you been able to stay connected with your team? Well, obviously, uh, it's been a great opportunity to use new technology. Um, you know, I'm very familiar with Zoom now. Um, had a lot of uh, team meetings, some individual conversations. I try to reach out to players individually on occasion. <clears throat> you know, so that's, that's been a great way to touch base. Um, I think we struggle a little bit with the group Zooms because everybody comes on and nobody wants to talk and you've got all these players and, you know, it almost feels like I'm just asking the questions. Um, that was interesting because you, you would have thought that young people would be a lot more into the Zooming and that kind of stuff. But, I, you know, they Snapchat and stuff like that, but that's something they can do on their own and then they just post it, but they're actually having to interact uh, via the, you know, the computer now. But one-on-one, -on -one, it seems to work very, very well. Um, I, I think that, um, um, you know, that for me has been the best way to kind of stay, stay in touch with players. When the news came in July about the, the fall season uh, being suspended, how did the team handle that news? I was actually surprised that, that they handled it very well. I, it's almost as if they anticipated it, you know. Um, you know, we – you know, we, we got to a point early in the pandemic where, you know, PA started to get a little bit better. The numbers started to drop. And then, you know, as we got closer to, you know, halfway through the summer, there was this big, you know, surge nationwide and cases. So I think that, you know, everybody kind of staying attuned to that, you know, realized that, you know, the chances of us, you know, having a normal fall was going to be, uh, was going to be in jeopardy. So I, I don't, you know, I don't think it was a shock to them. I thought they handled it very well. Um, yeah, so I was kind of pleasantly surprised. Well, we know that the vast majority of classes online uh, are, are online for the fall. Um, in terms of kids staying on campus, uh, those numbers are down uh, significantly. What about your team? What do you think the percentage of your team is uh, that are on campus or at least in the area um, as they get into the fall wanting to do some work together? Well, I, I haven't done the math, but I can tell you exactly we have 14 of our, 14 of our 20 players who are on campus. <clears throat> I mean, obviously, the ones that live off campus at Brookwood or Wellness have returned. Uh, we had four freshmen who decided to opt out of uh, the suites and, and have gotten, gone together and gotten uh, a, 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 um, an apartment off campus. So of my, of my 20 available players, I will have 14 of them, you know, able to be here on a daily basis to do any workouts or, uh, you know, or practices that we can do. There's, a, there's also several of them that live in Wilmington, Delaware, um, that will probably likely carpool up once we have a schedule of workouts. Um, I really only have about two players that, uh, or three players that I don't anticipate seeing of the 20, and they live in Canada, Florida, tough to, to get freshmen accustomed to that college life. Um, and especially this year where it's not a usual college life where some, some might not be on campus, some are off campus, some are out of state taking online classes. You're not practicing uh, with those full team practices. How do you work to get those freshmen incorporated into your team culture as you look forward to a winter season? I think that def that will definitely be a challenge, and I think that that's something that we're going to try to get the, the, our players that are back on campus involved in. Um, hopefully, we can work with Kyle and our strength and conditioning program to 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 put together a workout that they can continue to do, you know, on their own while they're home. <clears throat> and then, uh, you know, everything is you know on a volunteer basis, so you know we're not going to be checking in. You know, we'll just be checking in basically for their for their uh, morale and, and welfare. Um, but we want to we want to give them the tools that, that would help them, you know, to get focused and structured. Uh, I think the scary part for me is the fact that you've got you know all these classes online. Um, you know, I've made you know additional um, a decision to add other players to our our mentoring program so that we have another touch point with regards to you know me myself and somebody else and the assistant coach. And, checking up on them academically. Um, but yeah, I think once our team gets here, we'll, we'll probably you know, discuss you know, the players that aren't here and how we as a team can reach out to them, maybe assign them a big sister or a teammate that will touch base with them a couple times a week. And then we'll continue to have um, <clears throat> team Zoom meetings to, so that they don't feel like that they're you know, not involved in you know, what's going on here on campus. Sure. 
Um, you graduated um, some very talented senior leadership. Mm-hmm. This is a very different looking team as you head into this year. Uh, and during this time where there's so much that's different, it seems like you need some strong veteran leadership to help you get through this time. Who are some of those players who have stepped up or you expect to step up um, during this fall and, and get you on into the winter? Well, I, I think that I'm blessed with this volleyball team because not only do we have, you know, you know, seasoned leaders, um, you know, that have been, you know, around for a while, but we have so many other girls that have leadership qualities, you know, themselves. So, you know, we have, we're going to have these pods. We already have pod captains assigned and stuff like that. You know, they're current team captains that we've kind of split into the two pods. But there's no shortage of leadership here on this team. Um, you know, we have the titles, but we have a lot of girls that have that. A lot of girls that use initiative. You know, they're very, um, you know, very interested in, in team chemistry and team bonding. So I don't think that's going to be a, a real issue with us. There's a lot of girls that just want to step up and take other responsibilities, and, and are very good at doing that. Um, so I don't. I think that's one of the strengths of our team is we have a lot of you know um, good teammates, uh, and we have good leaders, and we have good followers. You're coming off one of the great seasons in school history, a school record for wins in a season, NCAA tournament victory. Um, The year before that, PSAC uh, division championship. So back-to-back seasons, very successful, winning um, at a high level. The, what, what, how has that affected the returners and their mindset as they have reached new levels the last couple of years? And also the, the incoming athletes how has that raised the bar for them? Well, I think it raises it significantly, significantly because the expectation is to maintain that level of performance and results. You know, it, I think it's, a, it's always a struggle to kind of get to those different levels, and we've chipped away at it for a lot of years, and we, we finally got to the point where you know, we're, we're one of the top four or five teams in the PSAC. And we know that, and, and we want to maintain that. Um, we, we did lose some, you know, significant seniors, but we have some really strong, we have a four-year starting outside hitter. We have, we'll have a four-year starting libero, and we've got a lot of good leadership on the team, a lot of experience. We have a super athletic um, <clears throat> freshman class last year as well as this year. You know, so, you know, I think we're going to be able to, um, you know, to maintain that level of performance. Um, it, in, in a way, I you know, we have this momentum going and also now we, we run into this pandemic, but, you know, I realize that all the different programs are dealing with the same issues. I think the teams that do, that do it right, you know, they, they get as much done as they possibly can and, and use this opportunity to, to do some more team building and bonding. Um, will, that will be to their advantage when we get to resume normal play. Um, one of the things I've really liked about this process is that prior to the pandemic, we just would go to tournaments and watch players play. You know, I did last week alone over 13 Zoom uh, meetings with, you know, prospective student athletes. I did three last night and I have two scheduled for this evening. So I'm getting to know, you know, potential recruits on a, on a higher level than I had before um, and getting to know them and their personalities and, and what their passions are and what drives them. You know, so, you know, I you have, you can look at this as, you know, you know, an inconvenience, but I, I'm trying to take this as, hey, you know, there's, we're learning new ways to do things better. So. What did you hear from alumni um, after last season, um, you know, reaching such high, high win totals and, and postseason success? What, what was the feedback from alumni that you received? And also, do you think that, um, did you find that the success you had last season helped you in recruiting this offseason? Oh, yes, absolutely. I, I think the last couple of years with having success has helped us in recruiting. Um, you know, these, these uh, pers- prospective student athletes go out there and when you talk to them, they'll, they'll bring it up. Hey, we saw you, you had the most wins last year. You had a good season, you made the NCAAs. You know, so I, I mean, potential recruits are looking at that when they're looking at schools. They immediately go to the volleyball page and see what's going on. So I think that that absolutely, um, you know, has helped our recruiting. Uh, success breeds success, I think. Um, the alumni reaction has been obviously very positive. I would say the one word that stands out to me is, is proud. You know, a lot of them are proud that they were part of this program and they're proud and excited that Millersville is, you know, kind of in the, uh, in the, in the top tier now of, of teams in the PSAC. 
And so there's, there's been a lot of excitement around the, uh, the success of the team. As you look ahead to a potential season that starts in the winter, what are you most excited about um, in seeing with this team? Well, I mean, I was really super excited about, you know, with all the new athleticism of some of the players that are coming in and, and taking the opportunity to, to actually train a lot during the fall to, pre to prepare for, you know, a spring season. You know, but it is a challenge because not all not all of our players are here. In fact, two of our setters are, are players that live in Maryland and, and uh, uh, Delaware that that aren't going to be here. So hopefully they'll be able to come back on occasion for practices. You know, it's very rare that we get to do a lot of individual work in in the fall. Normally that happens in the spring. So that is one thing I'm looking forward to taking the players that we currently have and focusing on skill development and personal development as players you know, to kind of get them ready that once we get the team back, we'll have our typical two weeks to get ready to compete. And then we can focus on, you know, the system that we will run next year.